Peasant Productions presents the Math of ESP, why it works even if you don't believe in it. Um, today is day 78 of Occupy ISS. Um, Saturday the 9th, and I'm alive, I'm kicking. Uh, for the most part, you know, we can consider that I, I'm down to my last couple of meals. Um, doing an extremely spiritual thing right now, pressing an awful lot into the idea of meditating and staring at my images that I have created for myself. Uh, some are published, some aren't, you know. Most of it I'm publishing just simply because they're, they're fun to create and I've put enough effort into making them really pretty realistic or very interesting, uh, such as the Gandalf one I'm working on, that you know, I am putting it up on the internet and let people see what I do. Um, the two-thirds forward captain's ready room with the cute little girl on it. Ooh, man, I, hit, I, have, I have hit 79 and 86 uh, views on each of the days I released that. That pretty little lady, lady does bring her bring the people in. Um, I am also at this point in time, it's about 6 p.m. Saturday night. I have been basically up since uh, Thursday, probably, probably 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, but I've set the the idea of using four o'clock in the afternoon uh, as the the time mark to go off of. So this is now some 50 hours since I have actually laid down and, and, and really slept. Um, I did, because of my age and the fact that I'm old and worn out already, and uh, not had the best of diet for a little while now and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I did state that I'm quite certain that I would end up with my head dropping onto, onto my lap or falling on the ground and, and, and getting short naps. Um, I have taken three of them so far. Uh, none of them have been longer than about a half an hour. Uh, I can't sit in my chair forever. I have to get up and out of the chair. I don't have much of anywhere to go. The apartment here. Uh, like a prison cell is big enough, I can walk around, and yeah, I do remember kind of laughing to myself when I when I saw this place and realized it was a nice stretch of, of area to walk around in. That yeah, I could I could in fact actually if I had you know got locked in, I could actually walk around inside and stretch my legs, which of course the other place. Uh, Mika Sella's little room <laughs> offered no ability to do that. So this one here, I am I am able to stretch my legs a little bit, but I also my back starts hurting from being at the computer um, and getting into it and doing whether it's doing artwork or otherwise, and uh, I need to just flat out I have to lay down. So I'm on my on my bed for a little bit. I'm doing meditation stuff and I end up dropping off to sleep and waking up, you know. 15, 20 minutes later, I'll, I'll, I'll wake back up again because I'll realize, oops, you're not supposed to be sleeping. Um, so we're at 50 hours. Uh, I used to do this in the 20s, you know, in my 20s um, quite frequently because I enjoyed just a different frame of reference in the mind. Um, after you've been up for 24 hours. There's a change in the way you think. And if you are like a psychiatrist or a, or a normal mass sheep public servant type person, um, obviously you're going to scare yourself and run away very quickly. If you are on the other hand inquisitive, curious, uh, relatively intelligent, um, you know, analytical to some extent, and willing to look at yourself in a mirror and look what you're doing and how you're behaving. 
yeah, you have a different point of view and a different way of looking at things. And, you know, I've got this sign up here about, uh, you know, the free will, supplying energy to what's going on. And because I remember doing that, uh, because when I would do photo shoots and stuff, especially uh, 2015, where I had an awful lot of freedom to go when I wanted to and where I wanted to for a a few months, um, you know, I would go out and I would literally be shooting almost around the clock and, you know, just catching, you know, some little cat naps, wolf naps as I like to call them. I, I learned to wolf nap um, when I was in 10th grade, uh, 15 years old actually, but uh, I turned 16, yeah, I turned 16 in, in uh, uh, 10th grade. And I learned about wolf napping, which is you, you lay down uh, and a wolf would, in, instead of just going and plopping down, they would, you know, they would turn in circles a couple of times and then lay down. And then every so, every so often when they wake up, they would get up and turn a circle or two and get back and lay back down. And it, would, it presented a different style of sleeping. And I learned that, and I learned to be very efficient in how, you know, how I could do stuff. I had to be really, really put out tired to, to sleep through much of anything after that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I learned how to, how to handle and be in this kind of a situation. And then, of course, I know that, you know, the spiritual stuff, whether it's yogic or Buddhism or even your Christianity and in Bible stuff, you know, the, the people that were doing, you know, the spiritual stuff, I mean, they went up onto the mountain to see God, they went up into the forests and deserts, you know, Christ walked into the desert, Buddha walked into, you know, the, the, the uh, Buddha walked through all of his his maras and and his demons and stuff and sat under the Bodhi tree until you know things came out right and you know what what he was looking for and so I'm kind of in the position of I too by way of the prophecies of the planet and the situation at hand I'm kind of stuck in the middle of the road here. But yes, I am doing the spiritual thing. I am pushing, you know, myself as far and as, as, as hard as I personally can to make certain magical things happen. Uh, spiritual things happen. And there is, you know, it, it's hard to explain to anybody. Um, that's kind of why I say this tape, uh, at this point I'm probably going to go ahead and publish it. Um, understand, it, it, you know, I, I'm doing something the rest of most of your world doesn't believe in anymore. Um, you know, most Native Americans have been brought up so separated from the actual spiritual element of what they do, that it is perfunctory religious actions now to dress up in costumes that are sociably acceptable by the conquerors, um, and doing it for, you know, a couple of generations now, they, you know, they like the, like, you know, like the posts that we all put up, keep saying, you know, what did the, you know, Christians do and Catholics do when they got here? Yeah, they, 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 you know, you either joined them or died, you know, convert or die. And you know, an awful lot that said they converted still got killed. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, for your own safety, you kind of converted and, and you've walked away from that heavy spiritual aspect. And it's not that you, it's not that you can't do what I'm t saying or trying it or putting the energy in it. Um, it's just that there's such a negative aspect to it uh, throughout the whole of society. I mean, like, like I said, stop and think about a, a psychiatrist who went to school for, you know, four years and maybe a couple of years of postgraduate schooling um, is going to tell you that he knows more than you do about yourself, who he's never met, and 
he knows more about what you should be doing with yourself and in your life than you do even though he's never met you never really gets into being you know where where you are at or what you're doing because he only talks to you at most for an hour and then walks away oh i'm done next client okay so there's there, there's an extremely false premise there that nobody even questions you don't stop to think about the fact that the shamans were people that, you know, they, they were noted for their different magical abilities, and they were generally noted as children who, you know, would then go on, I mean, you know, like the Harry Potter stories, right? They go to Hogwarts to learn to be magicians. Everybody does magic. Well, all of that layers back down into stuff. Like I said, you pick up the Bible, it's full of stuff. You know, Moses splitting the Red Sea. What do you think that is, folks? It's freaking magic. Yeah. Jesus taking a, you know, a, a couple of fish and, a, and you know, a couple of loaves of bread and feeding a thousand or more people. That's magic. That's spiritual. So that's why I say you, you don't think about that. You don't look at it. You know, the Hindus have it, but they don't turn around and look at it. They're too busy trying to be like the yuppies in America. They want to have their cake and pie and air conditioning and kicking back and drinking beer and partying and having money roll in without them having to do anything for it. And here I am in you know basically the very worst lousiest position possible i have none of that available to me i have exposed these people for a you know 10 million dollar us dollar a year you know 200 million pesos a year business for just this little town san juan de los lagos Jalisco, mexico it's their income it's their way of life and they've been, you know, certified by the Vatican as a miracle for th almost 300 years. And they don't care that they're lying to people about it or killing people. And they don't see anything wrong. And all of Mexico is extremely corrupt. They're literally, I'm reading, you know, reports of, of, of how, you know, cartels are telling the government to get out of town because they, they're going to do their thing and that's all there is to it. They're, you know, they, and they're actually at one point, you know, trying to take over an entire refinery. And the refinery is state-owned Mexico, not, not, you know, the different little states in, you know, within Mexico. But it's the national petroleum company. So... Yeah, there, there, you know, there's, there's a very interesting lack of you people out there having the spiritual, and I guess in that sense that you know whether I, whether I succeed or fail, is yet to be be shown or outcomed, but at least I'm bloody well trying. At least I remember that there was, you know, once this stuff that did work, and. I'm doing things in accordance to, you know, to the human rules, the human books and stuff. So, you know, the fasting, the, the, the long hours up, you know, the pushing myself to the very edge, the literally isolation and communing with the gods and the spiritual realm and, and pretty much nothing else is all there. This is as much, in the, you know, I could be in the middle of a forest as much as I, I as much as I have contact with people here right now. So yeah. But needless to say, you know, um, February 9th, still alive, still kicking. Uh, 78 days in a year. I'm kind of amused at that, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not exactly happy, I'm not exactly sad, I've got work to do and things to keep myself busy, so, but yeah, we'll see where it goes and see what happens. Yeah. Occupy ISS, we survive.